body correctly. So uh, enjoy. Okay, the first thing we're gonna do today is just work into the wrist. So we need to get into this extension in the wrist. And all you're gonna do is bring the fingers towards your knees, heels of the hands are away. You can hook the toes at the same time as well. I always like to do that, it feels nice for the feet too. And in this extension in the wrist, this is gonna be super important for when I come into that bridge, that my wrists are really open. We don't wanna put excessive weight through them. So let's wake them up, make some circles, move into that extension. And if you're particularly tight, you're obviously free to pause this video, spend a little bit longer than we do today throughout this flow, really opening them up and prepping the wrists. Keep moving around. The further away the hands are, the deeper the extension is going to be in the wrist. You can test to see where you can go. Obviously, bring them closer if this feels too much. From there, it's always good to just work into both positions as well. So let's go into that flexion at the wrist back them onto the ground, extend the arms, we're turning the armpits of the elbows forwards and then just rock in and out. Once more into that extension, pressing the heel of the hand away and then draw the elbows in, let's make some circles in the wrist. So just moving nice and slowly, the bigger the circles the better, find any tight points or any clicky points. And then from there, let's come onto all fours. We're going to take a breath in, tilt the pelvis forwards, come into an extension in the spine, squeeze the heel of the hand and the front of the knee towards each other as you open the chest and look ahead. And then let's flex the spine, tucking the bum, curling all the way up through the back, spread the shoulder blades at the top and tuck the chin. A couple more of each, tilting the pelvis forwards, coming into that extension, noticing how that feels in the back, noticing any areas specifically that feel tighter than others and then tucking and rounding out one segment at a time. Once more of each, tilt the pelvis forwards, extend the spine, open the chest, and then curling over and under, tucking the bum under, pressing out, and come back to a neutral position. From here, we're gonna hook the toes, lift the hips, and come into a downward dog. So you can bend the legs here and walk through the feet. We want the back to be nice and flat and open, so we're coming into this flexion in the shoulder wrap the shoulder blades across the back spread the fingers lock the lower ribs in and down so i'm pulling the lower belly in i'm not arching and forcing my spine into that extension just yet pull the belly in tight walk through the feet and from here if you're feeling it and you might not feel this one you might not like it or get it and that's fine we're going to work through the spine into some waves so i'm going to think about pressing through the lower vertebra the mid then the upper when it gets to the top come into an extension and just make some waves in the spine. Don't worry if it looks different when you do it. As long as there's no pain or discomfort, it should feel nice. Just flowing through each section of the spine. Maybe going the other way. And just wiggle about. Make some shapes in your downward dog. Shake the head out a little bit. Wiggle through the hips might feel good to add a twist reaching for one leg anchoring underneath or maybe the calf if reaching the ankle is too much and then switch to the other side from there we're just going to lift the eyes and walk the feet up to the hands come up to a halfway lift so we're nice and flat through the back pull the belly in as you exhale fold bend the legs here take the belly to the thighs hug the legs tuck the chin I'm not wanting to force this rounded back position, so let's compress the belly and fold here instead. Wiggle about, maybe hold the elbows, ragdoll, giving you options just so you can do what your body feels like it wants to do right now. And then let's curl up. We're gonna reach the arms up and then fold on the way down, take the hands to the ground. From here, step to plank, just gonna get some heat in the body. From this plank position, you can lower the knees first, tuck the bum, or go forwards with the shoulders and lower down nice and controlled. Press into either an upward dog or on the forearms. And all I'm gonna do in either of those positions is lengthen through the spine, engage the tops of the legs. So whether I'm here or here, I'm lengthening and engaging the tops of the legs, not sinking the hips and arching the back. Lift the hips back to downward dog. Walking through the feet, breathing in and out of the nose. 
and then let's step the feet to the hands, come up to a halfway lift, folding down. Once more through, curl up, reach up, grow tall, fold down, take the hands to the mat, step to a plank position, pull the lower belly in, welcome to lower your knees from here, and then press through either onto the forearms or onto the hands, we're opening the chest here, coming into the spine, we're opening the front of the hips as well, but we're really strengthening the shoulders, lift the hips, come back to downward dog. Breathe in and out of the nose. We're going to ripple our way up the spine from here. So from the base all the way up to the top, lower down once more and lie flat. Okay, from here, all we're going to do is place the hands by the shoulders, just hover them off the ground, pin the legs together, take a breath in on your exhale, lift the chest, lift the shoulders. The so feet can stay down, squeeze the butt. Inhale and then release. Take the head to one side. Take a breath in, inhale, prepare. Exhale, lifting up. And then taking the head to the other side. Might feel good to take the hands out, lift the chest and back down. Lift and back down. Just moving, doing what feels good for your body. And then from here, we're gonna have a little go at interlacing the hands behind the back. You can take this back a step if this feels too intense. So I'm pressing the palms together and interlacing the fingers. And then with my fists, I'm trying to draw them down the back of the body. At the same time, I'm also gonna lift my feet. So pin the legs together, take a breath in. As you exhale, squeeze the bum, lift the chest and lift the legs. So super intense back strengthening exercise this one. Pin the legs together rather than letting them separate out. Keep them engaged and then gently release back down. We're gonna do that twice more, just getting some heat into the spine. Have a little moment to breathe and rest, and then when you're ready, interlace the hands. Draw the shoulders back, pinch the shoulders back. Take a breath in through the nose to prepare, and then let's lift up. Draw those shoulders down into the back, squeeze the legs together. Really strong activation in the posterior of the body. A couple more breaths here, breathing in and out of the nose. And then release, coming back down, take the head to one side. We're going to do that once more. Take a breath in to prepare, interlace the fingers, press the palms together, lifting the head. On your next exhale, raising up, squeezing the legs together, squeezing the bum, really drawing the chest high, pinning the shoulders back. A couple more breaths. And then release, take the hands by the shoulders, press back to the knees, lift the hips back into your downward dog, walking through the feet. Let's wrap those shoulder blades down into the back and then make some waves from the base of the spine to the top of the spine. And then from your downward dog, all we're going to do from here is lift the eyes, just take a little step or a little jump forwards and sit down onto your bum. You can use your hands to help you get onto the floor. So from here, coming into more of this bridge flow, all we're going to do is start with the fingertips pointing behind you and we're sort of aiming the little fingers towards each other, but if your shoulders are tight, that might feel almost impossible. So just take your hands behind you, fingers away so we're drawing the shoulders back. From here, whichever position you're in, pin the shoulder blades back together. Take a breath in through the nose to prepare, and then when you're ready, we're just gonna start shuffling that bum further away from us. Be mindful of your elbows in this one. If you start getting pain in the elbows, I want you to come back and just take it a little bit easier. So we're coming into this deep shoulder extension. Keep drawing those shoulder blades together as I lower the hips down. Breathing in and out of the nose. Opening the front of the shoulders. A few more breaths. This one can feel particularly intense. So just take it at your own pace. Don't force this position at all. And then when you're ready, we're gonna come back. So from here, we're taking the hands a bit wider now, or we'll shoulder width, depending on where you are. So take the hand shoulder width. Fingers are still pointing back. And then from here, we're gonna do a little hip raise, which is almost like a crab raise. I'm gonna tuck the bum under, draw the shoulders back, and then just start to raise the hips up. 
Notice here I'm tucking the bum, not forcing the back up and arching the lower back. So squeeze the bum, elevate the hips. And now from here, I can open the chest and lift the eyes up. So feeling the glutes working, pushing down hard through the feet. I want you to feel the backs of your thighs switch on, the hamstrings, as well as the inner thighs. And now we're gonna lower the hips back down. So you can do a few raises there, just opening the chest and the shoulders, tucking the bum, elevating the hips, and then back out. So that's our first variation. And if any of these variations that we get to start to get too much, just want you to take it back. Don't feel disheartened if you can't get into a full bridge today. I want you to just take it steady. Um, I've been practicing yoga and practicing back bends for years and years and years. So it can take some time to really build up that flexibility and mobility because you want strength there too. Um, so yeah, please be mindful, just listen to your bodies, stop where you need to stop. So from this position, I've pinched back, I've tucked the bum, I've raised up, and now maybe I can start to press more weight into one arm and lift the other arm up, taking it overhead and back down again. Then maybe the other side and back down. And then from there, lower. So that's our next variation that we can go through. On the one after this, we're gonna start bridging the hips up a little bit higher. So I'm gonna tuck the bum, lift the hips, and now from here, raise one arm up. As I raise up, I'm gonna open, lift the hips higher, reach that top arm up and over, maybe even look towards that top hand, and then place it back down again. And then switching to the other side, lift the hips, lift the other arm, start to bridge and open up, reaching that top arm up and over. Press through the hand and through the feet to make sure the knees don't suddenly flare open. So let's keep those feet grounded, pressing the feet down into the floor. So you're still feeling a deep activation into the legs. It's not all going into the arm. Okay, so we can start doing those. We'll just flow them side to side. Let's do a few more. You can raise up from one hand or raise up from both. So I'm gonna press through one arm, lift the hips, reach up and over. Take it back down again. Reach. Hand back down. Keep pushing the feet into the ground. Once more, reaching up. Hand back down. Okay, from here, all we're gonna do is start to lie down. So I'm gonna bring my lower back onto the mat. So in this supine position, knees point up to the ceiling, feet are about a foot away from your bum. And then with the feet grounded, we want to tilt the pelvis towards us first. You'll notice now, once I've tilted the pelvis, there's no space under my lower back. From this position, I start to squeeze the bum and elevate the hips. Same as what we did for our crab hip raise. So from there, I'm not forcing and arching into the lower back, just tuck the bum. Activating the glutes, the hamstrings, the inner thighs, push the feet down into the floor. You have to actively think about pushing them down. Breathe in and out the nose and then slowly lower down again. We'll do that again, sink the lower back to the ground, peel the hips up. Pressing the feet into the floor. And then lower back down. On your next one, it might feel accessible to take the arms up and take the hands by the shoulders. So I'm gonna sink the lower back first, peel the hips up once I'm here. Now let's see if we can get our arms in this position. If you can't get the heel of your hand flat or point the elbow up to the ceiling, I don't want you pressing up yet because if the heel of my hand isn't in contact with the ground, I'm gonna put a lot of excessive pressure into my wrist and I could really hurt myself there. So just be mindful. So I've lifted up, placed the hands by the shoulders, elbows are pointing up towards the ceiling, not out. And now I'm gonna press through the feet and the hands together, maybe just lift to the head and lower back down again and just see how that push feels. Take a breath in and then press through the hands and the feet, maybe lifting a little bit higher and then coming back out again. If you need to lower down and rest, you can rest. So each time we're just pressing and seeing if we can get a little bit more range if you feel any discomfort or niggling or pain in the spine, you need to stop. Don't force anything. As I'm coming into a really deep back bend now. 
So take it back to any of the other variations that we've just played with and just focus on working on your mobility. So from here, lifting the hips, place the hands by the shoulders, elbows point up. And now pushing through the hands and the feet together, moving controlled on the way up, don't force it or go too fast. And now as I get to the top, I'm able to extend my arms. My feet are grounded, I haven't rolled to the outer edges because my knees are gonna flare out and you will feel that a lot more in the lower back. By taking my head through the shoulders, I've created more space in the upper back as well. And this will also take pressure off the lower back if you're feeling it there. So rather than having the head hanging here and looking at the hands, I'm gonna to struggle to extend my arms in that position. It feels worse on my wrists and my lower back. So take the head right through. You can play with leg variations, bringing the feet together, extending the legs, pressing through the arms. You can keep the legs bent. Obviously, the shorter my shape is, if I walk my feet closer to my hands, I'm now in a deeper back bend. That's going to be more intense on my spine. If I create a bit more length with my feet a bit further away, that may feel better for some of you. Lower the shoulders to the ground and slowly come down. So from here, just hug the knees in. Make some circles into the lower back. It's nice to just go into this flexion into the spine after that deep back bend. Maybe you want more, in which case you can take the legs overhead or bend the knees towards the face. And then come back down again. So we'll go through that twice more. And on these next couple of rounds, if that full bridge feels just not achievable right now, or you're feeling too much somewhere in the wrist or in the spine, I want you to take it back a step. So maybe you go back to the crab hip raises. Maybe you can reach and lift one arm up and just have a little bit of fun moving into those shapes. And those of you that feel more comfortable can come down into the full wheel. Bridge, <laughs> either. So from here, we lift the hips up, we place the hands by the shoulders. And I want you to press slowly on the way up rather than jarring and pushing really fast. So let's push through the hands and the feet, really feel what's going on in the body. And then take the head through the shoulders, like you're looking through a window. Breathe into it, stay there for about five breaths or so, and then come out when you need to come out. So do another one or two of those in your own time. The other option that you can play with if you want to add a little bit of a challenge is to go from our crab position. If you've got a really sticky mat like mine, this may slightly make it harder for you because your hand can get stuck. So what I'm gonna do, just be careful, <laughs> lift the hips, and then I'm reaching one arm up. As I reach up, I'm bridging the hips, I'm gonna turn this bottom hand as I bring the top arm over. And now I've come all the way over into that bridge, come out the other side, and sit back down. So have a little go at that as well. Try it both ways. Lift the hips, arm reaches up, start to turn this bottom hand. And now I'm back into my bridge. Lower out or come out to the side, you can choose. And then let's hug the knees in again. Roll around, maybe go into a happy baby. Maybe take the legs overhead. And then have a little rest. So obviously this is really demanding on the spine and the shoulders. What it will do when you can get into that full uh, bridge shape, it feel amazing for one, as long as there's no pain. Um, it will strengthen up the whole posterior of the body, so everything on the back of the body, and it will really open up the front of the body. One thing we didn't do much of prior, I'm trying to keep this video short, <laughs> so it's something I'm not so good at, is opening the front of the thighs as well and into the hips. So you might feel it's a little bit more accessible once you spend a little bit of time opening up into the quadriceps and the hips, working into some lunges, spending a bit more time opening up the front of the body into more of an upward dog. Um, so anything there that's gonna help just open into the hips, because if the hips are super tight, that may also be limiting uh, that bridge position. Um, but yeah, in terms of the full bridge, it's gonna feel really nice opening the shoulders into the front of the body. This movement specifically, I really believe helps to improve overhead range for movements such as like your handstands, 
Also, if you're trying to learn to like kick out of your handstand, um, being able to land into a bridge is a, is a good place to know that your body can go to if you had to bail from your handstand. Uh, and then you can start learning fun stuff like kicking out of your uh, bridge as well. Um, but yes, and then in, turn of, in, term, in terms of other training such as barbell movements, I found from uh, coaching CrossFit for quite a few years, uh, being able to achieve a movement such as a bridge has really helped people's overhead positioning with a barbell or um, things like overhead squats or snatches. So this movement is honestly such a great movement to be able to build your body to do. It'll help condition and be a solid base for other movements on top. It just opens up uh, the possibilities. So um, I hope this practice helped a little. Try to keep it short. If you need more time, then pause the video and spend more time going through some of those um, some of those movements that we did prior uh, to your wheel. And just remember not to force anything, don't push anything too far too soon. Uh, this sort of movement can take a long time uh, to be able to get into that full position. Um, so let it be gradual, listen to your body, and uh, most of all, just enjoy the journey. Um, thanks for joining me today, guys. Class dismissed.